Welcome to Vancouver Business Network, where entrepreneurs learn, network, and grow. I am Roger Killen, the organizer. This talk is brought to you by Ion Connect. This state-of-the-art co-working space and te tech lab helps grow innovative ideas to commercialization and market launch. Our speaker is Stephanie Sang. Stephanie is the CEO of Granted Consulting. In Western Canada, Stephanie is affectionately known as the Grant Angel. Stephanie works with entrepreneurs in all industries on developing grant strategies for growth. Since 2011, Granted has supported 700 plus clients and generated over $15.5 million in grant funding with a staggering success rate of 95%. Vancouver Business Network and most welcome guests, I invite you now to put your hands together and give Stephanie Sang the VBN welcome that she deserves. Thank you, Roger. Let me check my spot here. All right. Thank you, everyone, for coming out today. Um, so my goal is for each of you to leave here with more confidence in applying for grant funding, if that isn't something that you've done yet. Um, so let's start with some statistics. Government grants, $26 billion in grant funding, a lot of it potentially unused year after year. So statistics show that there's about 4,500 programs that are available by Canadian government, uh, you know, different entities of the Canadian government. And there's a large part of that budget that doesn't actually get used up every year. So let's start with the statistics. Um, I understand from an earlier poll, sounds like a lot of you have not leveraged government grants. That's not surprising to me. Um, let's start talking about the grants that are available. So I mentioned earlier, $26 billion in grant funding. Now this is not just for for-profit businesses in Canada. It may also be for nonprofit organizations or municipal um, organizations. However, if we just took 10% of that amount and said that was in grants, so, so beyond tax credits and whatnot, that's still $2.6 billion that's available to businesses like yours. So who do you, what, what, what do we think about um, number of people who don't know where to apply? Any guesses? 60%, well, let's look, 74%, right in the middle, right in there between 60 and 90, okay. So 74% of businesses don't know where to apply. And that's a big problem, isn't it? I mean, when we look at, doesn't matter where you're joining us from, um, the government has limitations in terms of how they can market government grants. So when we look at different programs that are available out there, as a taxpayer, I'm sure you could appreciate that they should not be posting up billboards saying, we're giving away grant money, and so therefore, the number of companies that can access grants is limited because they just don't know that these grants exist. Um, what percentage of businesses do you think have received grants? 25. 25%. Any other guesses? 5%. Boom, 5%. So one in 20 um, have received grants. And there's no numbers in terms of how much grant funding they have received but to know that one in 20 of you have received grants. And that sounds to me like very similar to this room today. And what percentage of those who have applied for grants found that process easy? None. None. Well, Roger, let's not be that pessimistic about it. Any other guesses? 10%. Two. Okay, so 2% actually found that process easy. And I will tell you that there are some grant programs very easy to access. You know, you apply, they reply pretty quickly, you know that you have the grant moving forward, and that's it. Other programs, and I've hear, heard some concerns in the room already today, months and months before you know what's happening, they don't tell you anything, you email them and they go, well, it's in queue, and that's as much information as you can get. So frustrating for businesses, yes? So let's look at some basic um, business basics in terms of what makes you grant eligible. Number of years in business. Now, why would that be? Why would the government want to limit or have a restriction on the types of businesses in terms of how long they've been around? Yeah, that's right. As a taxpayer, and we're all taxpayers here, the government has to take care of your dollars, yes? So part of the challenge is going to be why should startups, I think in the first five years, the failure rate is in the 70%. I mean, that 
right? It's very high. And so ensuring that your business has been around for at least a year is usually where most brands will start coming into fruition. If your business is a startup, and some of you in the room today and some viewing um, may be a startup, there are other grant programs that you may be able to leverage. It's not all grants that require a one-year or two-year business existence, but keep in mind that as your business grows, once you hit that one-year mark, you're gonna be looking at different grant programs for your business. Right? Number of employees. So this one is usually um, stated if you are involved in hiring grants. Part of that is if you're a solopreneur, and you wanna hire someone else, you're running your business, you're doing your own sales, and you are trying to take care of someone new. It's very difficult for the government to say, here, here's a pile of money, go and hire six people. Because the reality of it is, there are some measurable outcomes on the government side. They need to make sure that those dollars are used well, and that the staff members that are brought on under these grants, for instance, stay on with your organization, or that they're more employable in one way or another. So number of employees is usually stated for certain hiring grants where there might be, you know, you're bringing in a student or maybe you are bringing in a recent grad and there may be concerns that someone is a little bit more green in their career and you might need to handhold them a little bit further along. Um, other areas where they don't stipulate this but you need to keep this in mind is in market expansion programs. So let's say for example, I was gonna take my business into the US and I might be a team of four people. And when we list out the who's gonna actually execute these activities, the concern is going to be, how are you gonna manage all the business that you have here in Canada and then grow into a new market without additional sales people, without additional marketing people, without, you know, so there's a variety of different resources that are required, human and financial. And so that's another one where they may not state it on the actual application guide, but it's important that you take a look at that if you are looking at expanding into new marketplaces. Um, industry. So agri-food has very specific industry buckets of funding. And so in the case of agri-foods, it's like a $3 billion budget that they get every five years and it replenishes on a regular basis. Construction, a little bit more challenging. Service-based business is a little bit more challenging. There are some people in the room who are in, are in um, IT or digit, digital technology. There's a little bit more there. Particularly now, in terms of who's in power in Canada, and this may be the case in international waters as well, green and clean technology, very high up in the priorities of government. And so, of course, there will be specific buckets for those industries where there's different mandates created for whichever country that you're listening in from. Um, the other thing that's very important is that grants are not meant to be an ongoing financial crutch for businesses, right? So I'll get a call once every six months or so, and I'll be, Stephanie, if I do not get a grant, my business is going under. And the answer is, your business is going under. Because there's no grant that is big enough or reliable enough or should be used in the way that, that it keeps businesses afloat. Um, so having the resources financially and human resources to be able to execute the grants, and I mentioned a few examples of what we're talking about there, but also having the financial security to ensure that you can actually follow through. There are some amazing grants out there, $75,000 to expand into new markets, $50,000 to do this or that, hiring grants that, and training grants that will supplement 60 to 100% of training costs. But if you don't actually have the right people or the right resources in place, the chances of failure are very high. We'll go through that in a few minutes. The other thing is your track record. So I hear that someone in the room mentioned um, that they had applied for a grant, they didn't know they would got it. And that is not rare, okay? Because maybe it's like a year ago I applied and I totally forgot about it and I just got notified now. The challenge is that if you did not accept that grant or you didn't tell them what happened, they're gonna assume that next time you wanna apply for it, they're not gonna make you money again. It's very similar to, I'm a parent, so if my son tells me, mom, I need 20 bucks to go buy a book, and he comes back home and he says, I went to the movies. The next time he asks me for $20, the chances are he's not gonna get it. So very similar, if you think of the government <coughs> as kind of like a parent um, and how they are stewards of taxpayer dollars, it's very important that you look at, they look at your track record and that you keep that very clean. Okay? 
Um, another thing that they don't tell you, um, although it's very important, not just here in domestic waters, but also internationally when you're looking at grants, is will the project that you're working on put Canada on the map or put the country that you're in on the map? And what's important about that is innovation is very competitive internationally. Everybody's looking to race for the next newest technology, the next newest process. And so if you're able to develop that for your organization, for your industry, for your country, the opportunities for grant funding may be higher than someone who's doing something very standard or staple um, in, the, in the industry that you're in. Okay, so these are all different grant factors to keep in Keep, keep an eye on and just understand. The other side of things is if your company gets too large, so now you're at 500 employees or you're at $50 million or $100 million, you're going to say, do you really need this grant? So that's another thing for you to consider as well. Okay. So we all love stories of failure, don't we? It's like, how did you succeed? No, 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 that's not the right story. It's what did you fail on? And I will tell you, as a grant consultant, now for eight, almost eight years, many areas where we could have done better or just stories of how how our staff have dealt with such certain situations or stories that we hear of companies coming to us and saying we failed here i'm going to share a few of these without any names mentioned so number one not assessing a grant properly this is i'm not this is not in a, any particular order but this is definitely top five okay so when you're looking at a grant what does the grant actually represent what are they actually looking for? Are they looking to increase employment? Are they looking to increase skill set? Are they looking to put Canada on the map internationally? You have to understand the purpose of the grant before you apply for it. Incomplete applications. You would think that many people who are applying for grants would fill out a complete application. But what I feel, and I've, I've spoken to a few entrepreneurs about this, is they're like, well, if I don't know an, an answer to a test, I just leave it blank and I would assume that I still get 90%. And the answer to that is with grants, it doesn't work that way, right? So we're kind of accustomed to that. Maybe if you're in school and you're taking a multiple choice test, you'll give up five questions and not spend too much time on those because you're like, I don't really know the answer. You'll either guess or you'll skip it. In the case of government grants, you're competitive against everybody else who has the complete application. So there is no such thing as NA unless that is an option. So you need to make sure that if they ask you, tell me this, or explain this, or what is your address here, or tell me who's responsible for your company, that your application is complete. Because the alternative is, if they get a thousand applications, and they approve a hundred, and there's half of them that are incomplete, those ones are the first to go. Making assumptions. So I applied for this grant last year, I'm sure, that the rules are all the same. There are grants that have changed 140 times in five years. Who knows this? I know this. I have to deal with every single grant change. I have to go and notify different businesses that have accessed this grant before and say, yes, last year they paid for coaching. No, this year they're not paying for coaching. Right? So there's a lot of changes that the government, why do these changes happen? Change in actual government leadership. Change in the priorities within your region could be provincially, could be federally. Changes in the different sectors that are growing in your, in whichever region that you're in. These are all reasons why things change. And also just, I don't like it done this way, so I'm gonna change it this way, I think it's better. They go and change it and they're like, oh man, change it back. So that happens a lot. So making assumptions that you know a grant very well is going to be a challenge for businesses if they aren't on top of it just before they reapply or before they apply infrequent research. So there are cards in the back there that talk about how much time does it take to research. So let me just take you through the process of a grant research, shall I? You go online, which is amazing that we can go online now and have the resources of, you know, a variety of different websites right at our fingertips. The challenge is, A, the websites could be wrong. B, the links that are in the websites will take you on a little bit of a rabbit run. You'll be like, click here, Yes, the grant is still available. Click here, fill in your application form. Click, 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 submit. Sorry, the grant is full. What do you do? So if you're not researching frequently, what we do is we'll take a look at 
you know, not just the keywords, but we'll take a look at um, who's the issuing authority, who is the minister that is pushing out this particular grant, why are they pushing out particular programs. We'll look at the federal budgets. I see some yawns already. I know, it's boring stuff. And so the challenge is that if you're not on top of your grant research, it's, it's very difficult for you to really understand where the change is happening. What is a new program? Is it called something new? Sometimes it's just a new name and you'll not be able to find it, right? So a little bit boring. Number of hours I would commit, at least four to six hours if you're really serious about doing grants, four to six hours a week, 24 hours a month, and then multiply. So about 45 to 50 hours over the course of the year if you wanna be on top of where the grants are, okay? Missed grant information. So. Here's another thing, not assessing the grant in one way is, is already a challenge, meaning, oh, I didn't understand what the purpose of this grant is. But then you missed that last year, or when they put the information out, you assume that for-profit businesses can apply for this grant. And you miss that it's only for nonprofit organizations. You put together a business plan, your financials, your forecast for the next three years, who's gonna be doing it, you get letters of support, you submit it, they return it and they say, you are a for-profit business, you no longer qualify for this program. So what do you do? So you've missed key grant information. Then understand that when you look at it, you have to assess the eligibility criteria and really take a look at what are the types of companies that they're supporting? What are the types of organizations that they're supporting? Okay. Are these mistakes that you would think most business owners wouldn't have an issue with? anyone have an issue with like ever ever filled out a form and just left a couple blanks just thinking oh, I got 95 percent of it okay, I'm going to tell you with grants it's done a little bit differently I'm sure with scholarships it's very similar okay applying too late oh there's this one as well you see a deadline and you go okay I've got a month right and you don't look and it says by end of day 5 p.m pacific standard time you need to submit this and you submit it at 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on that deadline date, guess who just gets rejected immediately, right? So applying too late could be hours, it could be minutes. There are grants that we've seen where the funding went in eight hours. So people go, oh, it just opened up, I'll just do it tomorrow, and they're behind the eight ball. So they haven't looked at how competitive the program is, they didn't understand that timing is everything, some of these grant programs are, we'll look at the first 50 applications that come through. So applying late doesn't always mean you didn't apply on time based on the deadline. It could also mean it's just oversubscribed. So if you're the first 10 applications in, you're getting checked. They'll review your application. Maybe the next 10 as well. Oh. So that's where it's very important to ensure that you are looking at how competitive a program is and that you are not applying too late. And again, I'm gonna to quantify too late as not being the first group of applications or just full on missing the deadline. Forgetting stakeholders. So those who are a part of an organization who has maybe even applied for a grant before or not even grants, let's say something like fundraising. How can you not go and tell your partner that we're going to apply for this? and to ensure that you have the resources necessary to carry out the activities. It's just bad news. So it's really important. It's not just your, you know, it's not just the people who are putting the money in. It could also be potentially your staff. Hey, we're gonna be going to the US. So what does that mean for your sales team? Does it mean that they do less work here in Canada? Does it mean that you're hiring an extra person? Does it mean that they have to travel? These are all things that are really important that you connect with your stakeholders, be it staff, be it partners or be it business, business partners, um, maybe even if you're applying for your business, so the business owner, to ensure that they understand why are you applying for the grant and what is their commitment to ensure that you are successful in carrying out the grant activities. No follow through, so that's another challenge. You apply for a grant, we see this all the time, we get calls on this all the time. You apply for a grant and then you're like, oh, just wait and wait and wait and wait and wait. And then you find out there's no follow through. So you have missed the deadline to submit documentation so you can actually claim the dollars back. 
right? What a, what a waste of time for you to start that process, do the research, fill out the grant application correctly, get the approval, sign off on the approval, and then not use it. And there are a lot of companies who don't think, they don't fast forward a bit and go, hmm, I wonder if I could do that in March. It is tax season, I am an accountant. I wonder if I could do a one week training at the end of March. That's a challenge, right? Just really understanding when are things gonna come through? What is your commitment to it? And actually following through. Now, here's a tip. You don't have time to follow through? Please tell the government as soon as you know. Why? It saves your reputation. We went through that as a challenge earlier. So not being able to do something is not gonna hinder you so long as you let them know. The challenge is where you ignore their emails and their phone calls and they've now allocated $100,000 to your business and you're nowhere to be found. That's where it gets dangerous. Leaving money on the table. So for those who are, let's say, for example, hiring someone and they apply for a grant and it's a four month program, hiring someone who's a recent grad. And they're like, you know what? I'm just gonna apply for two months. That's all the amount of work that I actually need. You have up to four months of wage subsidies. You apply for two months. And so whatever happens to the extra eight weeks, it gets applied towards somebody else. Make sure that you're covering yourself a little bit. It's not to say go, go and like overextend yourself, but make sure that you are looking at what are the needs. So by utilizing this grant, I can save 50% of their wages for an extra two months. Maybe that's something that you wanna think about. Put a little bit more money in to get a little bit more money out. There's also instances where you go, okay, I'm applying for this program and there are, will be situations where you can't do this, but in the cases where you can, we were gonna go to a trade show and put a booth up, and it turns out that the trade show is full. So I guess I'm SOL. I applied for $20,000 to send two staff to attend this trade show, and we didn't end up doing it because there are no longer spots. What do you do? What would I do? I would actually go online, check out who it is that gave me that grant, ask them, hey, listen, it was too full to go into this one. There's another complimentary show or supplementary show that takes place a week later in the same region. Can I go to that instead? And the government will be like, yeah, we already gave you money, so to speak. We've allocated budget for you. Here's an opportunity for you to move that money into something else. But what is key to that? You have to know that you can ask. A lot of companies assume that whatever they have on paper is what you have to follow through with. So some people will go to a trade show just because they put it in and they said, well, I got money to go to these four trade shows and I felt pressured that I had to do that because I'm using government grant funding. And the answer is, if it's not working for your business, it's not going to work for the government either because the outcomes that they want are increased revenues for your business, increased visibility. And if you're not doing it wholeheartedly, it defeats the purpose. So last but not least, no strategic leverage. So this will happen. You apply for a grant, you get it, you walk away, you complete the process, and you don't think about grants again for another year. Then something will happen, you need to hire someone, then you think of grants. Everything is really reactive. There's no proactivity in looking at what are your goals for this year. I'm sure with VBN, there's probably already been a speaker talking about planning the, your year. I mean, we're at the end of a decade, you're going into 2020 now. So being able to understand what are your goals for 2020 and beyond, and then matching those grants to your strategic objectives. Very key. I get this comment once in a while, and it's grants are not a priority for us right now. You know what I hear? I don't hear that. I hear free money is not something I want. That's how it translates in my brain. It's like, wow. So if they gave you money to hire someone for free, that would not be of interest to you. Why? Maybe you're not looking at growing your business. If they gave you money to implement technology, and I, all these different scenarios I'm telling you are scenarios that I've come across. They give you 50% of money to hire, to bring in technology into your business so you can become more digital and more digitized for your clients, for your, your, your workforce, and they'll give you up to $50,000. So you don't know that that grant is coming down the pipe, you're not researching on a regular basis and you're saying that's not a priority right now. There's so many businesses that are implementing new technologies. All of your businesses are probably implementing technology in one form or another. And to say grants are not a priority to me 
is like not interested in free money. So for those who are seeing that, I would love to meet you because it means that money's not a huge priority for you. I'll take the extra. Okay, so what are grants for? Um, hiring. So these are buckets that I'm gonna tell you, and this is important because I will actually tell you specific programs that are open in a couple of slides. Youth hiring. Are they gonna give you money to hire someone who is in their mid 30s or early 40s or even in their 50s and they have 20 years of work experience? No, why not? Because they've probably proven themselves in the workforce. They probably have an opportunity to have, you know, been hired on and worked in companies and have generated some experience. Where would the government want to grow? They want to grow the youth. They want to grow people who are recent grads. They want to grow students, right? So that's the area that you're going to find stronger adoption of programs on the government level. The other side, recent immigrants. Why? It's important that immigrants can get into the workforce. So yeah, we understand that maybe they're perfect, their English isn't perfect, or they don't have relevant work experience in this country. So we'll give you a little money to hire them on. Recent immigrants is defined as someone who has Canadian citizenship or gotten their permanent residency in the last five years. Okay, some of you in the room might be in that category. That's not age specific. EI candidates, so EI stands for employment insurance. So those who are on employment insurance might be people who were injured. Maybe they were laid off from a particular job. Lots of these um, candidates out from sawmills uh, recently. There's a lot of um, people who might be taking a maternal or paternal leave. And so there are some benefits that you can get in Canada for that. So if you re reach out to an EI candidate or someone in Work BC, you know, an organization that actually helps to support those who are looking to get back in the workforce, you can, you can get potentially up to half of their wages for 26 weeks. That's like tens of thousands of dollars that you can get to bring someone back into the workforce and train them up and work with you and grow your business. Persons with disabilities, I heard someone in the room speak of that earlier. Are there programs like that? Absolutely. Ensuring that we're helping those who also need a little bit of a lift, right? So government, they will have programs like this. Co-op students, there are some students in this room. You know, for those who are employers looking for some keen students to be able to bring them on, fill a co-op term, five to $7,000 in wage subsidies for that. Training, so training grants are really important to the Canadian government. In fact, there's a new program, I'll be speaking to a newspaper about this in a couple of days, that will give a tax credit back to people who are taking training and they can claim things like employment insurance for the time that they're in training. But there are also programs where the employer will sponsor their staff, including business owners, you know, so as a staff member, I'm on payroll, I would qualify to be able to take me and get training in leadership and management and social media and business skills and you name it. And so why is that important to the Canadian government? Because they are mandated to help upskill the Canadian workforce. So what are we talking about when we look at dollars coming back? Up to $10,000 per employee per year is what you can coming back up to between 60 to 100%. So that's a huge benefit for business owners who wanna either send themselves or their staff members to training so they can upskill. Um, market expansion, I touched on this earlier. Companies who are looking to either export or to provide services outside of Canada. Now, I'm gonna pause here for a sec. Why would the Canadian government support you taking your products or services outside of Canada, but not as much domestic expansion. Any guesses? Put Canada on the map, absolutely. So how would it look if I am a restaurant? Well, let's do this. I'm a brewery, I own a brewery here in BC, and I'm competing with another brewery in Alberta for market share in Canada. And yet I got a grant from the federal government and that brewery in Alberta did not. What would that do? to the reputation of the government, to other breweries who are not in, you know, named there. There's like thousands of other breweries across Canada. Why, could, why would you be able, or how could you justify the government giving money to one and not the other? Unless they have specific innovation, unless they're really special in the way that they do things. Maybe they're green, maybe their process is very different. Maybe they're supporting a particular technology that's new here in Canada. 
Otherwise, the Canadian government would be very hard pressed to be able to support one and not the other. There are some construction companies in the room, same thing. Why would a construction company get some funding here and you not qualify for it? So by the Canadian government putting Canadian companies out in the international you know, market to help with services and, and gain market share in those areas, they can, they can justify that. They can say, we are competing against the world for market share. And so we're gonna give some form of contribution to help you be more successful outside of Canada. Okay, so market expansion. There's other things like you have a technology and you wanna pair it up with another company in another country. They will give you money. They will fly you out there. I'm looking for my trip to Hawaii. You know, ideally there's another grant writer somewhere in Hawaii who has some form of technology and we can mirror it together and I can get my trip and my hotel paid for. So that's the ultimate grant, right? Is to take busy business owners and give them a grant to just take a vacation. That would be ideal. This is the closest you'll get up to 75% of travel expenses to be covered if you are building technology with another joint technology in mind that's outside of Canada. Why? We wanna bring innovation also back to Canada. So there's some really amazing entrepreneurs outside of Canada that are building things that are complementary. Put the two and two together and now you've got new products. Now you've got another revenue model. Um, the market expansion thing is really geared towards trade shows, you know, maybe bringing in some expertise, maybe some consultants or some lawyers or some accountants who can really help you set yourself up for success outside of Canada. So if you are listening in from another country, look at those programs within your, organized, within your own country as well, because I'm sure that there are these competitive grants for you to gain market share in other countries. And then we look at research and development. And we're in the building for research and development. There's a clean tech accelerator upstairs. There are a lot of technology companies within this shared workspace. And so R&D is gonna be really key. Why? I think we rank 23rd in Canada as a developed nation in innovation, which is crazy. So what do they do? The government throws money at it. They give tax credits and they give grants and they provide support to ensure that you can take your technology to the marketplace. Now keep in mind, research and development grants are geared more towards the development of the technology and not when you've already commercialized. So if you're already at the point where you're selling your technology, you're probably a little bit too far along to get a good amount of government funding. Then you go into the hiring training market expansion grants to actually go to market. So we'll stop here. This is not the end of presentation, but I just want to make sure everyone's on the bus. Any questions? And I think that the one thing I've learned about questions is you probably have a question in your mind that's bringing somebody else's mind. So please. If you are gaining market share in the U.S., for instance, and you're, sorry, yeah, so the question was, um, when we're talking about innovative, are we talking about really innovative businesses to gain market share outside of, is that all that it's restricted to? Right. And the answer is no. So there are programs for market expansion where you are selling cameras and you are a Canadian business, you don't even necessarily need to be making it here in Canada because manufacturing costs are here high in Canada. But there is some component where the ownership of this technology is in Canada or you know, the product line, not necessarily just buying and reselling, but the product line is owned by a Canadian company and then you're taking it into a new country that had, you don't have market share in. So to answer that question, it's not just restricted there. Yeah, any other questions? No? Okay, I'm gonna continue on. So where are you gonna go and find these grants? Um, so one area is there are some resources with the Canadian government. There's an app, so a smartphone or a tablet app now called Innovation Canada. Um, there's a website where you can fill in some information about your organization and what types of funding uh, programs you're looking for. I will say that the Innovation Canada website, and there's probably very similar ones internationally as well, where the government will put out information about the different programs. Now, a couple of caveats. The Innovation Canada website was built for federal programs. So as you know, we are, we are provincial government, we have regional 
you know, Western diversification. We also have uh, prevent, sorry, we have municipal, regional, provincial, and then federal. And so with Innovation Canada, with its name, they're covering ideally Canadian grants at the federal level. So that's not gonna be the only resource that you're gonna be looking for, but if you are looking for programs that are within Canada that's la launched at the federal level, so where the government of Canada is launching it across Canada, that's an excellent resource. It doesn't just give you grants. It also provides what are the loans? What are some of the other resources that they're providing you with, right? So just take a look at that, fill in one of their things, I did hear um, recently that uh, because their Innovation Canada app is newer, it's more in beta. So just you know, take that with a grain of salt and just make sure that when you're looking at things, you're kind of looking at the website as well as the app, because okay? there, there might be some differing information on this. So then how would you do it for provincial grants? You will look at the province of BC. What are some of the provincial grants that are available? Maybe you're in a particular region or you're moving into a particular region. Maybe you're building a presence in the Okanagan or another part of, of Canada or another part of BC. Take a look at where those programs may stem from. Make sure that you do your grant research in that way. For nonprofits and charities, very important that you look at, and there are some, some people in the room who are either involved um, as a board member of a charity or maybe you volunteer. Take a look at resources like Charity Village. And here locally, we have a, a, an office called Vantage Point. Um, and so Vantage will actually give you some guidance when it comes to running nonprofits, but potentially even funding sources for that. Okay. So as I've been you know, building out Granted, one thing that I realized is that there seems to be a disconnect with what does the government say on their application guide and what is it that they really want in an application to be submitted. So instead of relying on the government sites, we went and built our own app. So Get Granted is a technology that we at Granted built um, with a, a third party partner and it matches government grants to businesses. So you fill out your profile, you're like, hey, I'm a film business, I am five people and I am in BC and we were incorporated in 2015 or registered as a business in 2018, whatever it is. You hit submit, gives you a list of the grants that you qualify for you click in, there's videos, there's, we're adding in processes now. Um, there are best practices that we've learned about the actual grants and it gives you that 40 page application guide or 80 page application guide, the key bullet points within a couple of pages. Why is that important to business owners? You just covered that it could be 50 hours of your time every year to look for grants that you may or may not be able to find. So rely on the expertise of others to be able to help you facilitate that. So I've given you the free resource, which is Innovation Canada. This is a paid platform, but I would go in and play around. Get your first grant on us for free. There's a 14 day free trial. I would check it out and see what's the first grant that you can get. The other cool thing about this, pro this um, system is you leave it, you're like, okay, uh, there's two grants or, oh, actually I'm gonna look at it a little bit later on. And you've marked off what your profile is. It'll actually email you when there are new grants that match your profile. So that's something that the government doesn't do, right? They don't tell you, hey, we've just replenished our budget. Here's eight new programs that now meets what it is that you're looking for. And then over and above that is tracking because we know people fall off the bandwagon. So ensuring that you are able to keep the information in the dashboard so you can go back to it anytime, know what you applied for, when you applied for it, the amount of money that you got, you know, ensuring that you've got that um, pieced out uh, process is very important as well. Okay, so check that out. Um, and yeah, this is, we built this because it was helpful for our business, but we also built it because we understand that Canadian businesses really have this need. So the key slide that you guys have all been waiting for, and I put it at the, near the end of my presentation, what's actually available? So this is going to be applicable to companies here in BC because the presentation is done here in Vancouver. So hiring grants, experience matters. So I did start off by saying youth hiring. And now I'm going to take it back a little bit and say seniors hiring. Hiring people over the age of 55 and getting a $2,800 wage subsidy plus potentially training dollars to supplement hiring someone on who has a little bit more experience. So somebody emailed me the other day, said, hey, we're bringing on a new CEO and he's 57 years old. Can I use this grant? I'm like, yeah, you can use this grant. 
Um, eco green, you know, this is, again, we're kind of in the mid, a little bit past the middle point of the government fiscal year. So although there are programs, they're a little bit more limited at this point, but, are, but we also see that they're coming back in because it was an election year here in Canada this year. So there are some programs that were put on hold and we're just seeing that they're gonna roll out again. So anything to do with eco-friendliness, green, natural resources, 15 to $20,000 to hire someone. Um, digital skills, anybody looking to hire someone to help with Google Analytics? Maybe the, you wanna do your SEO domestically, maybe, or in, internally, maybe you wanna work on your processes, your sales CRM, whatever it is. Being able to put a new hire to work so that they build their digital skill set and then benefit your business. It's $12,000. Various co-ops, right? 5,000, there are co-ops you can get $2,700 for, there are co-ops you can get $5,000 for, there are ones you can get $7,000 for, you can get two or three new hires, co-op hires over the course of a year, one a term, that's fifteen dollars to $20,000 in savings right there. That's just hiring. Talked about the employer training grant, which is the training grant to give you leadership skills and maybe you hired someone on and they need basic, maybe a restaurant and they need some basic wine training. And that adds up. Wine training, WSET level one is like a specific wine training, 600 bucks, but you go to level two, it's like a few thousand dollars. They'll pay for 60% of that training, potentially even 100% of that training. Anyone who's looking for digital skill sets, meaning you guys want to learn a particular software, maybe you're implementing things like ClickFunnels, Maybe you're implementing things that are for your social media or for analytics or whatever it is. Maybe it's a new CRM. Maybe it's a new ERP system. 80% of your training covered up to $10,000 a year. Like that's where the money is. And then you're not necessarily just having to rely on the consultants of that technology software to stay on your team. It's a fractional kind of connection that you've made there where they just help you when you need help, but you actually have that expertise in-house. And that's, this is one of the best grants that we've seen really has grown our business, changed the mindset of our staff, and really showed them that we're investing back into where their growth is in, in their career. Um, market expansion. So can export up to $75,000 based on 75% of costs to market in a new market outside of Canada. So what does that mean? It means, Roger, I give you a dollar. You're the government, you give me three. Not a bad deal, right? Up to $75,000 per market per year. So when you look at that, the ability for you guys to go to Europe, now with CETA being signed, or for your ability to go to Asia PAC because the Trans-Pacific um, trade deal has, has been done. For you guys to go outside of Canada, it's, the government's making it easier and easier. Put in a dollar, you get three back. That's, that's a really good deal. I would say, how many dollars can I give you for you to give that? And up to $75,000. Um, the Can Export Innovate, very similar in that you can go and do these exploratory meetings and build your network outside of Canada. And particularly for development of technologies outside of Canada, okay? Then we go into R&D. So R&D is a little bit of a monster. And I will be really clear in that IRAP, SHRED, you know, some of these acronyms, you're like, what are they? You can Google them and take a look at it. NSERC, MyTax. These are all programs that are geared towards businesses looking to develop innovation. So make sure you guys are taking a look at that if you guys are building out your own technologies or you're working with somebody else to do that. So I have two simple questions for you. One is in Canada, $26 billion in grant funding programs. First question, how much of that piece of the pie are you getting? And the second question, if it's not you, then who? And that's my presentation for tonight. Yeah. 26 billion uh, grants a year or is it overall? It is per year. And I, there wasn't a statistic just for businesses. So let's say 10% of that is for grants and 3.5 billion is for shred tax credits. That's still about $6 billion in benefits for small businesses in Canada. Okay. Question. Do you have any kind of census where I can just go to provide general terms what yeah. my business is yeah. and I think you give me some feedback well there's money here money money here blah, 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 blah. yeah because I don't even know the questions to ask right in order to lead me to the profit cutting goal yes so how can I work with you 
that? Yeah, so we have two different ways that we, we have, sorry? Oh, so the question was, how is it that we could work? Are there places where we can um, find, you know, get an, a profile from a company, understand what their needs are for the year, and then match them to the right grants? So there's two different ways that companies work with us. One is through Get Granted, it's just DIY. Very similar, you just fill in, I'm looking to hire people, I'm looking for training, I'm looking, and it just lists it out. You hit submit and that's your list, right? So you have the thing at your fingertips. Sometimes at nine o'clock at night, you need to know if there's a hiring grant because you're gonna be putting a posting up on Monday. So that's a resource that we've created. Um, then over and above that, we do work with larger businesses. Maybe they're, they are a little bit more complex in the way that their business is set up. Maybe their needs overlap. So we need two new hiring grants for um, people this quarter, and then we need some training. And then, oh, we're also doing market expansion. So for organizations where they're doing quite a few different things, probably necessary to work with us on a consultancy basis. And so we work on a annual fee plus a retainer, I'm uh, sorry, uh, plus a success-based fee. Um, to ensure that we're partnered with our clients to ensure they get success. So there's the small, you know, micro business, um, just get into grants, understand what's available out there. And then the other version is where we do the work for you. We write all of all the grant applications. The only thing we don't do is submit and we'll need some paperwork um, filled out and that's it. So two different ways to serve to two different types of clients. Anything in between, um, we're looking at that. So opportunities for potentially auditing applications. So you fill in your own application, you send it to us, and then our, on an hourly basis, we would take a look and, and see. There's no guarantees ever with grants, um, but our success rate is strong. So we could tell you pretty, pretty quickly right off the bat if you have something that's clean. It's a product or a combination of product and service that we're looking at rolling out for the next year. Next. Okay, yes, question. Say if you're a startup business, you just started last month, yeah. and now you want to hire someone from cross. Yeah. So what's the chance of you getting uh, uh, granted by the government? Uh, it depends on the grant that you're applying for, but I would say 100%. So come and see me after. Okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah, so the, yeah, so the question is, are you doing it out of the goodness of your own heart? Or are you doing it where there's a little bit of coin to be gained? And I'm gonna say, at this point, it's out of the goodness of your own heart. We are looking at affiliate marketing for this next year. And we are working with you know, some of the board of trades and chambers and whatnot to also get this out there. We, you know, there's a lot of organizations who are like, we understand this problem exists. So the benefit is that we can get more grant funding out there. Because isn't that what we need? We just need more money. Free money, not just any money, not loans necessarily. Great, yes. So no, I've seen the, the money yes. the government wanted to help you spend the money. Oh, good and question. Yeah, so after you get the money, do you get monitored? I see where this is going. So um, in certain programs, they will ask you to actually do a reimbursement pro process. So you get the, you know, if you get the grant, you'll get a document to say, yes, you've gotten the grant. And so you don't have to worry, you didn't get it. I mean, the only thing that could really happen is government goes under, which ideally really hasn't happened ever. So, but at that point, let's say you said you're gonna hire someone, and you say, okay, I'm gonna put them on payroll for $18 an hour, and you don't pay that, or you don't end up putting them on for the number of hours that they need to work, right? So you put them on for four hours instead of 30 hours a week. So what will happen is when you get the claim back or when you go and submit the claim, they'll say, hey, you didn't follow these rules. So we can't give you the grant. That was a really good question, yeah. Any other questions? So now you guys can walk out of here and get your first grant. That is the deal. And um, I wanted to have Roger come in and maybe thank you very much for the opportunity. I'm going to share this with you. Yes. There you go. Thank you. Stephanie, that was just a well of information. Uh, I had no idea. 26 billion. Yes. Where's my dollar? Yes, I I'm not know. getting a penny of that. Okay. Call me. You know where to find me. I do. I do. Uh, we need you to click the next slide yeah. because I need to thank Ion Connect for making this uh, production possible. Thank you.